Hello. Today's video will be about two highly similar multimeters from uh, Unity. The one is our channel's favorite until now, UT43C. And the newer model is the UT43C+. You may wonder why would be any sort of reason to buy another multimeter that is highly similar. Well, first of all, it was due to a personal curiosity in terms of how much a model can be improved uh, subsequently. And later on, because I found out some interesting uh, aspects. And of course, I wanted to test them. So, first of all, uh, these two models are, let's say, on the entry level range from uh, Unity, which is a known uh, Chinese brand, um, that uh, I was particularly interested in seeing how um, their products improved. I also like the fact that uh, they were um, easy to use, reliable and quite consistent in their behavior. So this is one of the many reasons I chose to buy many um, Unity multimeters. Of course, I have no doubt they are not on the same level of uh, calibration or internal design as Fluke and some other well-known brands. But for my purposes, as uh, um, a person that doesn't work as a professional, and of course, I'm highly interested in electronics, um, those models seemed more than enough for me. Of course, I have to mention the fact that there are much better uh, multimeters from uh, Unity available on the market. However, the point was finding a good one that was still available and the one that could address most uh, users' requirements. So the UT43C is uh, an interesting uh, option in this uh, scenario. It's a multimeter that you can find at uh, prices that are a bit above um, 10 euros or $15, which means it's a highly affordable multimeter. Um, and just like uh, the UT43C, the UT43C Plus offers uh, the same um, range of uh, uh, measurements with a very small distinction that I will later mention. And of course, has most of the features you already know. So I was interested to see how much uh, of a difference a newer generation makes on the previous one's features. So let's see. Uh, first of all, you have the same rotary switch. We are not talking about um, an automatic ranging multimeter. So we have to get that out of the discussion. Uh, for many um, professionals and uh, hobbyists, uh, having a multi-ranging multimeter has its pros and cons, and I um, have the same perspective on them. Sometimes auto-ranging is highly useful because you get to the interested uh, to the value you're interested in quite quicker, a lot quicker than uh, with a standard one. On the other side, there are situations where um, precision or response time is not as good as on a uh, classical non-auto ranging multimeter or manual ranging uh, multimeter. So uh, we had to get this out of discussion. Another major difference between uh, multimeters nowadays, and I will of course uh, touch upon it, is the fact that uh, just about any um, one, uh, any available on the market, uh, have a different um, way of uh, powering themselves. Uh, the classical ones, and I was uh, very fond of them, had 9-volt uh, batteries. The newer ones, like you can see over here, have uh, AA batteries. I think that this is an improvement because AA batteries can be found a lot cheaper and you can just about uh, uh, find any sort of battery to use again in a multimeter with no issues. And even rechargeable ones um, cost somewhat on a similar level or perhaps even less when they are double A's and then, uh, or the triple A's and then when they are 
the classical uh, 9 volt battery. So uh, this is uh, an important uh, difference. All right, so uh, let's turn on the multimeter and let's see what we have. Uh, we are going with the voltage measurement. You can see that it um, starts slightly slower than the other one, which gets very quickly to the desired value. I think that this is um, um, a result of uh, having slightly improved uh, electronics, um, an improved design, which also features a more advanced um, um, system on a chip uh, or um, microcontroller. And I think that this is one of the major reasons you are going to see this difference. In practice, it doesn't matter too much, but it's something that you might be um, interested to know. All right, let's see something else, which of course again matters. How, my, how quickly the device um, references itself or uh, self-calibrates and gets to the zero value. So it's almost instant. And over here, yes, there is a bit of a delay. Uh, most modern multimeters have this uh, culprit of not being able to, to reach the zero value as quickly as uh, older ones. I don't see that as a major issue, however you have to uh, take that into account and not think that we have um, technology that doesn't evolve in the desired uh, direction, because um, ultimately what matters much more is not, uh, in my opinion at least, is not how fast it gets to zero, but how consistent the value is and if precision is uh, improved or sensitivity is improved. And I'm pretty sure this is the case uh, with uh, such multimeters. Uh, because if you notice closely, and I'm going to show to that, show you that uh, very quickly. Okay. You can see right off the bat that the response time is much improved which means that you can find um, the desired value much quicker on a um, more modern multimeter than on a classical one. This is uh, something that you're going to notice with just about any multimeter. So um, there is a trade-off that had to be made between older models and newer ones. This is one of the reasons probably why you uh, see more modern uh, multimeters also as having uh, some sort of scale. Um, that uh, offers um, an analog representation of uh, uh, value variations. Of course, we don't have analog multimeters manufactured as they were before, so a digital multimeter also has to offer this additional uh, visual indication. But you understand that the features of more modern uh, devices uh, clearly are over the ones that uh, were um, made uh, almost uh, a decade and a half ago, perhaps two decades ago. So um, there is a lot of improvement that can be made, and this is uh, certainly one area where we see such a thing. Um, in terms of um, precision, you can see the same uh, situation. Um, you can have only a single uh, decimal or a single digit that uh, is um, uh, below um, uh, the unitary value, which means that you have the same precision on both the newer multimeter and the older one. Of course, I would say that uh, the way in which the value is presented uh, in the older multimeter is wrong in the sense that it should have had a single um, leading zero and not two, as um, you can see over here. So this is normal, this is not normal. But probably this was due to um, manufacturing um, oversight, I think. It's uh, just a simple thing that, and you can see that in other cases it doesn't happen. All right. Um, the fact that the value can slightly uh, change when you are uh, handling the device is nothing uh, unusual. This happens because there is uh, a sort of uh, capacitive coupling that occurs. So uh, you have to take that uh, out of the discussion. And of course, the fact that we are uh, on the most uh, <coughs> Sorry, we are on the most uh, accurate voltage measurement, which means that any sort of um, 
uh, small change in um, in current is going to be uh, picked up by the meter but this matters a lot because sometimes we have to have a good accuracy in uh, very low voltages and the 200 millivolts range is the first one we see all right uh, let's move further 2000 millivolts which is 2 volts again i think that uh, it's not really that great that uh, the old multimeter doesn't show the value as a single uh, zero, but uh, this was a common occurrence uh, with uh, many multimeters that were designed uh, during uh, this uh, time. Uh, it mostly probably was a result of uh, having a better indication regarding the maximum value that can be read. And um, having uh, this uh, indication was probably better than not uh, having it. Alright, so 200 millivolts and I think that the same um, sensitivity is going to be noticed. Okay, as you can see, the values are increasing roughly in the same vein with the new uh, multimeter being faster than the older one. Okay, the 20 volts range. And over here we see a clear indication that is similar for both, uh, both uh, devices. No issues over here. 200 volts, again, uh, the strange choice of having two leading zeros for no particular reason that could be modernly explained. All right, the same precision with a single decimal value. Uh, now you can see the one of the more meaningful uh, differences, although I'm not entirely sure if this will matter uh, to you in particular. Uh, the older multimeter had a maximum voltage range of 500 volts, the, um, the, old, the modern one has uh, 600 volts. Um, this pertains to the internal design of the device, I'm pretty sure that the, it was uh, slightly improved and uh, probably better able to carry higher voltages, but it may also be a marketing decision because most uh, products on, available on the market are already having a 600 volts uh, measurement capability. All right, let's move on to the AC voltages range. The same design choice, the same uh, precision. We are seeing um, the ability to measure up to 600 volts, 200 volts. And as you can see over here, it's the same precision. Um, continuity as well as um, uh, the diode reverse voltage roughly a similar situation I'm not expecting uh, major differences in this instance but I'm going to okay it latches quite quickly let's see how fast this one latches okay so it latches perhaps slightly quicker than the older model although the reading is not available as quickly yes clearly the reading is slightly slower but not in any meaningful way all right let's go to the uh, ah sorry i missed some uh, measurement ranges. Uh, this is the um, DC current measuring range. It goes uh, to 10 amps just as the older models, no uh, differences over here. 200 milliohms, the same precision, I'm not expecting major differences. Um, okay, I noticed something, 20 milliamps, uh, 20 milliamps. And then you have the 200 uh, microamps uh, range. Um, what I wanted to, to mention, um, when going on the uh, continuity test, you have an alternate way to measure um, reverse uh, voltage. So probably for testing diodes, you have to press this button again. Um, the way in which those features are being added um, makes uh, newer uh, multimeters slightly more uh, difficult to work with but on the other side of a more 
advantages in real use. So I don't see it as an issue. Um, you have the same um, 10 amps probe position as you had on the older device. No differences over here. We are going on the 200 ohms range and I'm expecting roughly the same behavior. So let's see. Okay, it latches quite quickly. Although, as you can see, the value doesn't get uh, up to zero. In this case, uh, with more advanced uh, multimeters, you have uh, the, the ability of um, making a relative um, measurement, which would mean that the internal resistance of probes could be uh, taken out of the calculation so that uh, the zero would be considered with your uh, probes and not with the additional load that uh, probes or additional loss that probes make. And that is uh, useful. On the other hand, we are pretty used to that, so it's not an issue. It's the same behavior as on the older one. Um, I think that the value is eh, it's shown in roughly the same way. Slightly slower, I would say, than on the older multimeter. But the difference is that when you see the values changing, uh, they change much faster on the newer ones. So the um, refresh or the um, um, number of um, counts that is being presented to the user is uh, higher than in the older one. Although the number of counts or the precision of the multimeter is probably not that much different. Okay, 202 kilo ohms, 2000 ohms. I am expecting the same performance. Actually, we don't have any meaningful way of um, seeing any difference over here. 20 kilo ohms, 20 kilo ohms, 200 kilo ohms, 200 kilo ohms, 20 mega ohms, 20 mega ohms, and we are seeing the same behavior all around. Okay, as you noticed over here, it presents a value much quicker than the older one. And I'm pretty sure that this is due to a more advanced design. Regarding other aspects, um, you still have the backlight, and this is a very useful feature when working uh, with such a device in the dark. And with more modern uh, multimeters, it's uh, even more of an advantage because um, since batteries can supply a much higher current and they have a much higher uh, power rating, it means that you can use the backlight and it will drain the battery a lot slower than on older uh, multimeters. Moreover, um, you can be certain that the device also drains less uh, power when it operates, which means that you have major advantages with a newer generation of multimeters that doesn't use the same uh, powering technology as the older ones. Okay, um, let's go to the temperature measurement. Uh, you notice right off the bat the fact that um, the modern multimeter doesn't show a reading of the current uh, temperature. I think that is, um, mm, let's say, slightly less um, advantages to a person that wants to know uh, the current environment in which uh, the multimeter uh, is present because uh, this would offer an indication right off the bat that might be useful in certain scenarios. Of course we are talking about ambient temperature and not the temperature that could be uh, found using uh, the probe. But I'm pretty sure that uh, this information is going to be uh, useful in uh, certain situations. However, uh, the way in which such devices operate also presents another challenge and I would like to um, show to you what my um, long time experience with using probes is, uh, temperature probes is with um, uh, such uh, multimeters. In general you have to make a compromise um, between having uh, much more accurate readings when 
the device uh, is using the internal sensor and when the device is using the external one because um, the way in which the circuit is being designed is that uh, the probes simply are superimposed on the same connection as the internal sensor which means that um, you have slightly less uh, accuracy and there is some sort of compromise between reading uh, values more accurately uh, with the internal sensor or with the external one. So uh, this was a concern and uh, you have to understand that there was some sort of drawback to the situation. As you notice uh, over here as well, uh, the temperature is not uh, stably determined and um, the amount of accuracy is not that uh, great. Uh, I'm expecting the temperature measurement range to work similarly. I'm not expecting a higher precision. Uh, though um, I think that this uh, is probably the situation we are um, seeing. I will um, present some of the specifications in um, the video's description so you can better find out if the device really has um, something else that is improved compared with the old one. But for the moment I do not uh, have available uh, nearby the temperature probe, so I will not uh, make any tests uh, using it. However, from my experience, mm, those uh, multimeters are not as accurate as uh, temperature measurement devices, and you have to take that as uh, a feature that you have, but not one that will probably make any meaningful difference. All right, um, perhaps I should have started um, by uh, mentioning what are my thoughts about um, the design of uh, this uh, multimeter. I think it's quite nice. Um, it has a ruggedized uh, uh, rubber casing, which means that it will withstand quite well uh, certain shocks. Uh, it has um, a slightly raised um, lip or cover, um, as you notice, which means that uh, there shouldn't be uh, as much direct contact between the screen and a surface it may fall upon. So this is a very good uh, safety feature. The classical model didn't have uh, this ability. There is a stand, of course, in the older model the stand is quite um, useful but not particularly well built. The more modern one uh, features a stand that I think is slightly more useful due to the angle at which it could uh, place the device. However, it's still not one that um, is uh, entirely useful. As you can see over here, even if there are two uh, potential positions that could be used for uh, this stand, the um, well, multimeter is not stable on this one. So I think that uh, you have to um, understand the fact that there are still some limitations. However, one feature I clearly noticed as being very nice is the ability to hold your probes together with the device in a very tight um, mounting. <coughs> and of course, although this is not going to be particularly useful in certain situations, it will be in others where you have to store the device or you have to um, carry it quickly and not uh, having any sort of issue with uh, dangling cables. So I think this one is a nice addition. Uh, the probes themselves, I don't think there are uh, that many um, visible differences between them. They seem to be um, built similarly. So I'm not expecting um, particular meaningful uh, changes in this respect. And um, what else can I say? Uh, in order to change the batteries, you still need to take out the rubberized uh, casing, and I will show you how easily you can do that. Of course, there is a bit of force that has to be used in order to manage this task. And of course, it's slightly more difficult in the current situation. And you have to unscrew an additional 
uh, in this uh, area in order to take out the, the battery's uh, cover. I think this is a slightly uh, better design than uh, the one on older Unity models because they would require you to have uh, the entire case taken out in order to uh, change the battery. And of course, as um, in most situations, you need to make um, a quicker change of the battery, this would not be entirely useful. Um, I would like to mention something else that is common with most uh, multimeters and you should be aware of that. Uh, very few actually advertise the fact that they can uh, turn themselves uh, off. The, off, uh, the self uh, power off feature can be useful in certain situations because um, if you forget uh, to take the meter out of the um, desired range and put it in the off position, the battery would be drained. Uh, for 9 volt batteries, this is um, a much more serious is issue than for uh, AA or AAA batteries, uh, AAA as is the case over here. So I think that um, this uh, is not going to be as major um, nonsense on newer models. Um, in the older one, yes, you have to take out both of these screws and then take out the rest of the case and of course remove the rubberized casing. So uh, those are the uh, meaningful differences I could find. Um, in terms of weight, I think there is not much difference, although this one seems slightly um, heavier. Probably part of the reason why this is uh, happening is due to the case and batteries, batteries that of course have slightly more weight, but it's not going to be something that is going to be noticeable. Uh, without the probes, um, I think that the weight is uh, similar between the older and the newer ones, so probably you're not going to find out a lot of uh, difference in practice. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on to actual measurements and we are going towards the 2 volts range. So we are going to measure a typical 5 volt battery, it's not a great one, but it's one that is um, of a known value around 1.5 volts, so let's see what the meter says. Okay, 1.519 and the older multimeter 1.519 uh, you may notice the fact that the value increases and gets to uh, the final reading a bit slow on the older multimeter with the newer one it gets much faster and is uh, much more uh, consistent. So uh, I think that there is no overshoot that you can notice in this. Well, over here you notice a slight overshoot and a lot of uh, values that are being presented until you uh, reach that desired value. Um, in terms of usability, this is both an advantage and a disadvantage. The fact that you can see more values can sometimes be useful, but the fact that the value is not the intended one uh, is a disadvantage. So uh, having a more consistent reading and a faster one, I think, uh, is going to be one of the major advantages of um, using a modern meter. And this is clearly uh, something that you can see over here. So, um, if you buy a newer multimeter, I would not recommend you uh, buy the older generation. But if you want to have to, uh, an experience using it, you can do so. And um, all my previous videos have been done with this particular model because I wanted to show to you that in general even um, an entry-level multimeter can still be good. And of course, the, there is a price difference between the older and the newer one, although it's not that high. I think it's less than 10%. So overall, if you're buying a new one, you can make a much better purchase um, using the UT33C or actually the rest of the UT33 range um, because there are more uh, models that are featured. Uh, the first one is the UT33A+, uh, which uh, has an auto-ranging feature 
and it's uh, the most advanced uh, the most advanced uh, out of the series then you have the UT33B which uh, has if i remember correctly the a way to uh, test batteries probably it um, uh, places them on a, under a certain load and then measure, measures the voltage they deliver the UT33C which of course has this um, thermal probe and I think that uh, oh, there is also a new T33D um, that uh, has another feature I am not entirely aware of. So this is the uh, product range. Okay, so uh, the 1.5 volts battery was relatively well um, measured by both devices with no meaningful difference. Uh, let's see the high current measurement capability because this probably will be interesting to some users. Okay, um, let's start with the older one. Okay, 1.28 amps, but 5.2. Yes, probably a contact that was not as well made. Okay. Yes, it seems also I made a small mistake. Um, the 10 amp connector is the same one, but the common of the ground is middle instead of at the right side. Okay, let's see. 5.4, and it's much. It's a much faster reading. 5.9. And it drops uh, slightly slower with the older model. Yeah, it's somewhat similar. Uh, so I think that uh, right off the bat, the measurement uh, capability is roughly similar. Uh, the difference you see in readings is not really meaningful. Okay. 5.8. It matters a lot how much pressure I'm putting on the probes, so um, the values being read are roughly similar. Uh, I don't see any meaningful difference, and the battery was previously rated at 5.9 amps or measured with the UT33C. So you can have the same consistency, and that is well, um, that is something that uh, you should know. All right, um, let's also measure on the 10 volts range. And of course, change uh, the probes to the correct position. Okay. Uh, no, I think we will uh, be using a 9 volt battery. It should have a voltage of around 7.8 volts or 8 volts. Let's see. Let's start the measurement with the older one. 8 volts. 805 volts. 807. Uh, so the accuracy is probably roughly similar. You may wonder why you see such a small difference and if uh, uh, there is a meaningful reason for that also. I think I made a wrong connection. I should have placed it over here. But this is very interesting because I will test something else soon. Okay, it's roughly the same value. And in here I was able to again measure, yes. So um, even if you don't have the probes set correctly, you can still uh, measure. It's uh, interesting, I wasn't expecting that, but you can see that I wasn't entirely paying um, attention. All right. So, um, in terms of um, um, features, you can see another very um, important uh, difference between the two, and it's a very major safety aspect. Um, it says that the 10 amps range is unfused which is unfortunately a bad uh, design decision because you could burn the device if you uh, incorrectly place it when let's say for instance you 
are a beginner or you're just making a mistake if you're a professional which is entirely possible and you uh, forget that you uh, place the device in the current measuring range and you go to uh, place the probes on the main socket and in that case you're going to either trip the circuit breaker or um, blow up your multimeter with uh, severe consequences so the fact that the, the, the TAM NAMPS range is not fused is a bad design decision um, while the milliamps range uh, the low current uh, uh, ammeter has a 200 milliamps uh, fuse on the newer model you can see that um, the 10 amps range is fused which is very good in terms of um, uh, safety and uh, the low uh, current uh, ammeter range is also fused at 200 milliamps so um, this uh, brings more um, useful information regarding what you are getting out of a particular device and this is one of the major reasons I do not recommend all the devices because in general they have been built to a lower uh, safety standards and you can see that uh, right away uh, another feature I have not presented uh, up until now is the fact that you can also, of course, um, hold a specific value and you can do so quite easily. Okay, and as you can see, the moment it's being unpressed, it reverts. Um, something else that I like about uh, uh, newer multimeters is the fact that you also have uh, an additional indication about the range you are currently in. Although the um, rotary switch position uh, offers you enough uh, insight, sometimes and particularly in low light situations when uh, you have to uh, concentrate yourself on other matters, uh, this is really useful. And uh, when the backlight shows and you have this indication of the uh, range you are at, I think it's a very good um, addition um, what else I should have mentioned uh, the rotary switch the rotary switch is probably the part that, that you're going to use the most out of the multimeter um, of course um, excepting the probes and uh, in here I also notice a slight improvement compared with uh, the older one the older one is noisier and um, of course has some sort of leeway while the new one is uh, tighter and has a much uh, better feel. Uh, I would also add the fact that this one can be um, cleaned slightly more difficult due to um, its shape than the newer one. So um, I think that in uh, aesthetics, uh, usability and design, the new multimeters uh, are much better than uh, the older models. But you can see that uh, the older ones still hold out to some extent and uh, they are not um, a bad presence in your uh, collection. So if you have more multimeters, you shouldn't be that much concerned about the older ones, yet newer ones also have uh, major advantages. So overall, uh, in, uh, as a way to end this video, do I think that uh, newer multimeters are uh, good and um, uh, they are a meaningful upgrade? Mm, not really. If you have the UT33C uh, and you thought about buying the UT33C+, Plus, you're not going to see probably too much uh, to write home about. On the other hand, the UT33 range also features the A model, the A Plus model that has auto ranging and probably offers a much more meaningful uh, upgrade if you are going from uh, that model. Um, in terms of um, uh, future proofing, I think this one is clearly much better. It uses a different uh, battery type, it has an improved design, it makes um, readings much quicker. So I think that you are going to uh, have uh, much more benefits using such a device than an older one. And also the fact that you are going to get used to um, certain improvements that you're going to find also in more advanced devices. So I think that um, if you have the UT43C, I would not particularly recommend the UT43C uh, plus range, although it's quite nice. Um, if you don't have um, 
a multimeter to start with or one that is uh, affordable and also quite uh, durable. I think that the UT33C Plus is very well. So if I'm taking the UT33C Plus by itself, I think it's a solid model uh, and one that is also affordable. Uh, but if you think about an upgrade, then it's not going to be a meaningful one. Unless, of course, you have the requirement of um, finding a better balance in your uh, um, collection. So, um, I think this uh, sums up quite well. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you uh, very much. However, um, I was also uh, hoping to make another indication and sorry for making this uh, late mention. Let's uh, see how well um, mains voltage is being measured. Okay, so 228 volts, yeah, quite nice. And the other one Two hundred twenty-eight, two hundred twenty-nine. So it's roughly the same voltage. Okay. So accuracy is not improved. And uh, I also remember to show you um, resistance measurement. So I think that around five hundred something ohms is going to be the value we are going to read. Okay, four hundred fifty-two ohms. Is good enough. I, I didn't know in advance the value. I was just expecting it to be around 500. And let's see what happens over here. I think we are going to have roughly the same reading. Yes, there is a very small difference and I'm not entirely sure which one is uh, closer to reality. But as you can see, you have uh, consistently the same performance. So overall, this doesn't change what uh, I previously mentioned. They are similar devices. They have similar performance. This one is uh, newer. It has um, slightly uh, more accurate readings and probably an improved uh, sensitivity, which is going to be useful in certain situations, but is not going to be a uh, very major uh, improvement over uh, the old one. However, as mentioned, if you are just thinking about buying a uh, multimeter, I would probably not consider it to be a bad um, decision, of course, if you are going to require that um, uh, temperature probe uh, capability. On the other hand, there are other models, the B+, plus for instance, for batteries, and the A for um, uh, the auto ranging uh, feature that are going to be much more meaningful. And I think that the A plus range, uh, the A plus model is the best uh, out of the bunch because it can also has have um, um, AC current measuring uh, capability, which of course is not possible with this model. So I think uh, overall that um, the UT33 C uh, plus is a solid model. In fact, all the range, I think, is uh, decent, but if you want uh, more features, there are more advanced models, not only from Unity, but also from other manufacturers. So, um, is it a recommended purchase? Yes, it's a, a solid model. On the other hand, if you're thinking about more features, there are much better uh, uh, multimeters. But for a durable, affordable solution, I don't think you can go wrong with the Unity UT33 model. So, thank you very much for watching and sorry for dragging it slightly further.